A study by John Siang, published in the Spine Journal, looked at the specificity and sensitivity of patient-entered red flags in low back pain. Red flags are a series of questions used to try to screen out for serious pathology in low back pain. So for example, these are typically categorized into four different categories. It would be malignancy, fracture, infection, and then cauda equina syndrome. For patient-entered red flags, the study found that for malignancy, a history of cancer had the highest specificity and sensitivity rate. For an infection, it was an unexplained fever. And then for a fracture, it was either uh, osteoporosis, a history of steroid use, or trauma. And then for quad equina syndrome, it was bowel and or bladder incontinence. And then when the study looked at the medical record, what they found for red flags with the highest specificity and sensitivity rates were for malignancy, it was still a history of cancer. For uh, infection, it was an unexplained fever, similar to what we saw for the patient reported uh, red flags. For a fracture, it was a history of osteoporosis and or trauma. And then for cauda equina syndrome, it was urinary retention and or lower extremity uh, weakness. One of the things that I find most interesting about the findings of this study is that the sensitivity and specificity rates for these red flags for low back pain isn't all that strong and that's obviously problematic because when we have somebody presenting to us with low back pain, we want to make sure that they don't have a malignancy, they don't have a fracture, they don't have an infection, and they don't have cauda equina syndrome. However, because the sensitivity and specificity rates of these red flags isn't that strong, just because somebody might answer yes to having one of these red flags, we can't actually definitively figure out if they have uh, one of these sinister pathologies. It raises our suspicion that they might. However, a lot of times people will say yes to one of these uh, red flags, but they don't actually have a sinister pathology. And the study mentions that one of the reasons why the specificity and sensitivity rates of these red flags is so low is because sinister pathology makes up less than 1% of all low back pain cases. And so because these cases present so rarely, it's hard to actually get the data that we need to be able to effectively screen for these conditions. However, I think it just serves as a reminder that we need to be vigilant when people present with low back pain that we're actually going through a comprehensive history and examination to make sure that they aren't having one of these sinister pathologies. And while definitely not a glamorous topic, the study also mentions that the documentation of these red flags within the healthcare community is generally pretty poor, and hopefully that's not a reflection that these red flags actually aren't being addressed when somebody is presenting with low back pain, because we want to make sure that when somebody's presenting with low back pain that we're giving them a good diagnosis and they aren't presenting with one of these sinister pathologies. So we're making sure that they don't have a malignancy or an infection or a fracture or cauda equina syndrome. And when we're just documenting it, we just need to make sure that we're saying if there's negatives or positives for these red flags. And that's obviously just helpful in giving a patient the best possible treatment when they're presenting with low back pain.